Alrighty. Uh, before we uh, start, I just want to give uh, full credit, uh, really full credit to uh, my dad, Terry. I'm, uh, I'm Max, by the way. Uh, to my dad, Terry, to uh, Sailor Bob and uh, Kat. And uh, the other people I want to give credit to are Jed McKenna, Alan Watts and Leo Gura, who I've um, learned uh, a lot from. So a lot of what I'm going to be sharing with you is things that I've learned. So it's not, uh, I don't claim it to be um, original. Um, but I'll, uh, I'll do my best for you. Okay. Let's get comfortable. <clears throat> so the, the thing that I just like to remind myself of before I meditate is trying to keep my uh, posture just gently upright. And the reason for that uh, that I found is that it stops me from falling asleep. Because if you find, uh, if you've ever seen people on the on the train and they kind of go like that, and the reason why they can't fall asleep is because their spines are up straight. Whereas if you find somebody sleeping like that, it's because their spine is not straight. So, <coughs> okay. The easiest way. to begin meditation is by listening. Gently let your eyes fall and eventually close. And listen. Listen to what I'm going to call the hum of the room. Like you were listening to music. Don't name the sounds. There's no proper sounds or improper sounds, so it doesn't matter if someone's phone goes off or someone drops something or... Just listen. And enjoy listening. And as you're sitting there, listening to me, do not try to meditate. There's nothing to do here. We are not trying to accomplish anything. We're just listening. So we're not worried about what progress we're making because there's no progress to be made. Give up trying to manipulate your experience. There is no such thing as doing this right. So the mind can be completely let go to do whatever it likes. If it wants to be noisy, that's fine. Let it go. Let the muscles go in the face. And listen. And if you notice that thoughts are coming up, which inevitably they will, 
you simply listen to them like we listen to the clock and the birds outside and my voice. So the outside and the inside can come together. And see if for a moment stop caring about anything at all. Give up control. There is no road to hear. Because you're already here. If this is a struggle, stop trying to make it go right. If this is going well, let go of that too. Empty. completely give up. You're just here. Notice the effortlessness in being here. No effort is required to be here. Surrender the search to find peace. Don't look for an experience. Just let it go. Stop trying to find happiness. Because to look for it implies that you don't have it.
enjoy being here. Let the jaw be loose. And gently, completely give yourself up. Just leave yourself alone. We are not practicing anything. So even to say, <coughs> I am meditating, is not quite right. You're just here. Let go. Notice that there's not a doing happening. We are not doing anything. We're just noticing what is already so. Everything is okay. So to say that we are not doing anything and not practicing anything. To say that the meditation is over is also not quite right. 
but you can open your eyes now. So now that it's over, well, we didn't really do anything. And we didn't really go anywhere. You're just here. Thank you, Max. Okay, so I'm Terry. That's the label I go by. And I was asked to speak a little bit about um, my journey, which I'll just touch on. I won't go into too much detail. But I um, got involved in spirituality or what I then called spirituality, what others were calling spirituality rather um, a long time ago, mid 80s. And I looked at all sorts of different things. And this is a short version and uh, in the end I was still left wanting um, I did enough seeking and enough looking to come to the conclusion that basically everything that I was looking at was I was being asked to put faith in a belief and I just couldn't do it there was something innately in me that somehow believed that there was something other than what I'd looked at and I used to have people come up to me all the time and say Terry you just need to have faith and I couldn't you know, uh, I mean, I had faith that the sun was going to come up the next day and so on and so forth. But in terms of, you know, some sort of uh, omnipotent presence or some God or, you know, I mean, uh, I kind of walked down the Christianity path for a while and was expected to just have faith, just believe, you know. And I couldn't. I just, I couldn't. I, I guess I... Hmm, that's not true. I could have, but I wasn't convinced that, uh, I wasn't convinced of which path to go down. Because everyone was saying that theirs was the right path, you know. And I had enough common sense to kind of realise that. And so I elected to not go down any of them. Uh, I, w I walked down a few of them, uh, a bit of a way. And um, again, I was left wanting. You know. um, and I remember, you know, someone said to me once, you know, why do you have so much difficulty just believing? Why do you have so much difficulty in having a faith in a God or some, some you know, separate being? 
And I said, I don't know. All I know is if I can't shake hands with God, it's crap. I was a kid, I was 25, but that's what was coming up for me at the time. If I can't meet God, if I can't know God, I'm not interested. You know? And I got to a point where I was um, not only was I dissatisfied, but I was scared because I had enough understanding to realize that a life or my life run on self, run on me, was probably going to be pretty bloody disastrous. At my best efforts, it was going to be pretty disastrous. And uh, that scared me, you know. Um, and I got to a point where I just decided to let go, let go of let go of seeking, let go of the searching, just let go. But I was scared. And I had uh, a friend of mine say that uh, there was this guy giving a talk tonight at such and such a place. And why don't you just come along to that and have a listen to that? And, and I was like, oh, another one? <laughs> like, really? Another one? You know? And uh, I made a deal with this person that... Um, if I went, that they would never ever talk to me about God or spirituality ever again, if I went. They agreed. <laughs> so I went and um, there was only about uh, 18 people, about as many as people that are here today, 18 people sitting in the room and it was a long table, thin, <coughs> thin table you know, enough to take just one chair at one end and one chair at the other end. And there was eight people sitting either side of this table. And I was out the front having a cigarette, just going, oh, I don't want to go in. I don't want to go in. I don't want to go in. You know, this is all bullshit. I don't want to go in. Anyway, I finished my cigarette and walked inside. And the only seat available was one chair at the far end of this long table. And I sat down there and I the, per the, the guest speaker had already started speaking and uh, I walked in and sat down and I looked up at this person and I just went, oh no. <laughs> and I just, put, I just made an immediate judgment and I just put my head down and this person was wearing a beret and had a beard and, and was old, I thought, I was 25. Old person was actually only the same age I am now, but anyway. <laughs> and... Um, I made a judgment. I just went, oh, okay, this is it. It's all over, you know. Um, I'm just going to have to try and do my best to get on with my life and live it like, you know, most people seem to live it and, and just kind of do my best. But I had my head down on the table and uh, my head wouldn't stop. You know, I, you know, I was like, what do I do? What, like, what now? Like... Okay, I'm just going to have to try and live my life. There's just this noise going on in my head. And that, that carried on for about five minutes. So I didn't hear anything that the guest speaker, not a word, was saying for that first five minutes. And um, eventually, about five minutes in, all my thinking stopped. I didn't do any of that, by the way. I, it just stopped. And all of a sudden, I could hear another voice in the room other than the voice that was going on in my head, you know. And um, I looked up and there was this person sitting at the other end of the table and they paused and looked at me and a big smile came up on this person's face and just happened to be, happened to be Bob, happened to be Sailor Bob, <laughs> sitting right there in the audience, you know. And the, the person that I'd criticised five minutes earlier, you know, great judge of character. You know, not. <laughs> not. <laughs> I was so far off the mark. Um, and he spoke for about 20, 25 minutes, something like that. And, there, and at that time, I couldn't actually understand... I was trying to piece together what it was that he was saying, but something in me just kept saying, this is it. This is what I've been looking for. This is what this guy's saying was making 
perfect sense on one level and on another level I didn't understand it. It was quite bizarre how it happened but something resonated in me and, and um, I uh, just focused in. I just listened to every single word he said and he just kept looking at me. He didn't look at anyone else in the room. He just kept looking at me for the next 25 minutes and talked to me. It was incredible. And um, got to the end of the meeting. We didn't know each other. Never met each other. Got to the end of the meeting and I thought, I'm never going to be able to get near this guy. Everyone's just going to swamp him, you know. And I just wanted to grab a hold of him and talk to him. And, and uh, again, great judge of character. Got to the end of the meeting and no one went near him. I was stunned. I was totally stunned. And Bob was standing on one side of the room and I was standing on the other side of the room and no one went near him. I couldn't. Anyway, so um, we walked towards each other and welcome. And um, introduced each other and that was the beginning of a relationship that I've had um, with Bob for the last 34 years. My God. You know. I was um, my son's age when I met Bob. And Bob was my age now, you know. And I used to think he was old. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> He's young now. Yeah, yeah. I certainly am. <laughs> um, so I spent a lot of time. I, I spent a lot of time with Bob. Bob was gracious enough to open his home and uh, when he was up, living up in um, Calorama, Sassafras, Calorama. And... Um, I went up there virtually every day uh, for about six months and just opened his home and, and his garden. We would walk around the garden, we would be sitting inside talking and, and he just devoted all of his time to me, you know, which is incredible. I'd never, I'd never experienced that with another human being before, you know, he was just there. And I spent about six months with Bob, you know, and... and um, and then he started up a group and started going along to that. Anyway, and there's more to my story. There's a lot more to my story. I've been involved in drugs and all sorts of shit when I was younger. And, you know, and that's another story in and of itself. But um, I guess what I was trying to, I, I, what I discovered was I was always a seeker. I was always trying to find something that was either gonna make me feel better or make me into a better person or a bigger, brighter, more vibrant person or whatever, you know. And, and like um, so many of us, I went down the drug path thinking that, you know, I was going to find it there. You know, I didn't find it in society. I didn't kind of, I didn't find it in my parents when I was growing up. And, um, and that came along and I was a young kid, you know, and I experimented around with that only to find it wasn't there. That really gave me a good hard slapping. Um, and in the end, um, I got thrown back on myself. And Bob kept throwing, constantly throwing me back on myself. You know? He wasn't giving me a belief system at all. Um, constantly, he just kept saying to me, inquire for yourself. But here's some beautiful pointers along the way for me to actually do that, you know. So it wasn't preaching a doctrine. It wasn't preaching a belief system. In fact, a lot of the times he would say, look, what I'm saying isn't it, you know. It's kind of confused me at, at the start, you know, like, what do you mean by that? Um, but after a while I started to understand, you know, what he was saying and, and indeed, um, Anything I say about non-duality today is not it. <laughs> no matter what I say, it's not actually it. All I can do is try and point and get you guys to look for yourself and see for yourself. You know, um, I could sit here for the next two hours and just describe what an apple tastes like if you've never tasted an apple. I could sit here for two hours just describing it, you know, and until you bit into that apple yourself, all you've got is a 
conceptual understanding of what I've said in regards to an apple. So the same is, is in regards to turning in and looking for yourself and discovering who and what you actually really are. Okay? So all I can do is point. I'll try and point to the best of my ability. So non-duality, that implies non-dual, it implies not two. It implies one. All the great religions confirm that. There is only one God. The only problem with that is what I said before. They all think their God's the one. Okay? <laughs> However, you know, um, primarily what they're saying is there is just one. One God. You know, or oneness, if you like. I'm going to try not to use the word God if I can help it, but sometimes it slips out of my mouth. Um, so what does that mean? Non-duality. Like, what do you mean one? You know, how can there just be one given I'm here and you're there and the couch is there and there's a moon in the sky? It implies many, you know. What, how, what is this one? And um, this is about self-inquiry. So um, Bob used to say to me often that the me, well, actually he didn't say that, what he used to say to me was, you know, Terry's got to go. <laughs> and of course, as a, you know, uh, uh, a, um, as a me, there's part of me that took offence to that. You know, like I thought he was being critical of me. Like I've got to go, sort of thing, you know. <laughs> so I didn't really uh, initially understand um, what he was talking about, but I came to see what he was talking about. So the only thing that separates me or seems to separate me from that oneness is Terry. And Bob spent a lot of time with me exploring who and what Terry is. What is that? You know, who or what is that? And that, you know, there's, gee, I absolutely believed I was. I absolutely believed I am Terry. I have a history, you know. I have free will, I can choose, I can think, I can make decisions and so on and so forth, you know, like my meanness as such felt extraordinarily real, you know. It didn't take him long actually to shatter <laughs> the complete delusion of that, you know. Um, there's a few pointers that I'll use today. Um, one that just immediately came to mind is my whole, I'll get to the pointer, my whole belief system, who I believe myself to be, was all based on whatever thoughts were running through my head at any given point in time. You know? And if I, you know, if I was asked, who are you, Terry? the first thing I would do is I would say, well, my name's Terry, <laughs> you know, to the, to the question, who are you, Terry? Well, my name's Terry and I was born such and such a year and I had such and such parents and I went to such and such a school and teachers and I had friends in school and I would paint this big diatribe, this big long story, not about who I am, but what had happened, you know? And the question, who am I, actually relates to right here, right now, in this present moment, like right here, right now. The closest I came when Bob used to ask me, who are you? What are you? Where are you? Who are you? The closest I ever got to being able to answer that question from a me um, was to say, after a lot of inquiry, after a lot of self-investigation and a lot of looking for myself, the closest I could ever get to it was just for me to say, 
I am memory. It's the closest I got. I didn't get any closer than that, you know. Um, and a really good way of testing that, and you kind of have to use your imagination with this particular pointer, uh, and that is, you know, if I could create, I can't, but so imagination is required. If I could create amnesia in every single solitary person sitting in this room right now, and your history was completely wiped, gone, no memory, no history, don't even know your name. You can still speak. You haven't lost the, the ability to speak English or to understand what others are saying. But your complete history is just wiped, completely gone. Who would you be then? Who would you be then? Without the memory, who would you be? There should be a blankness that comes up there. You know, if you're really looking, there'll be a pause and a blankness that should come up. Now, without that memory, do you disappear? If I was able to create amnesia, would you disappear? You'd still be sitting here, wouldn't you? Yeah? So that that's, would still be sitting here, who or what's that? Because that's here, in the present moment. That's real, that's here. Can't be denied. There's a presence, there's an aliveness, and there's an awareness that would be here, right now. So, if you're like me, what I kept trying to do prior to meeting Bob and even some of the way into some of the teachings or pointers that Bob was using with me, what I was trying to do was I was still trying to become something and I was still trying to attain something, get something. You know, this wasn't good enough. Life wasn't, you know, my me-ness as such wasn't good enough. I need to become a better me, you know. And then I started to learn what enlightenment was, and I went, oh, shit, I want that. Give me that. What do I need to do to get that, you know? And then I was wide open, like, I became a sponge with Bob, you know. And he kept saying to me, there's no such thing as enlightenment. What do you fucking mean there's no such thing as enlightenment, you know? What do you mean? So what I started to see, what I started to realise... Um, over the course of Bob's teachings was that <sighs> Bob used to say to me, yeah, um, there's nothing to get, there's nothing to attain, there's nothing, nothing to become, and enlightenment is a falsehood. There's no body, no one to become enlightened. What does that mean? <laughs> you know, and I struggled with that for a little while. So this idea of you already, what you're seeking, you already are. What you're looking for, you already are. Whatever method, whatever method is being used. We're always trying to become something. Yeah? But what we are seeking, we actually already are it. So, if that's the case, why doesn't it feel like that? Why, why, why don't I experience that here now? Oh, maybe there's something else I need to learn. Nope. It's the complete reverse, actually. Complete reverse. And I sometimes say, you know, there's nothing to gain, there's plenty to lose. What do I mean by that? Nothing to get, nothing to become, nothing to have, because you already are that. But there's plenty to lose, seemingly. 
What could I mean by that? What stands in the way of that presenceness, of that awakeful state? State, wrong word. What stands in the way? Me stands in the way. Me, the one that wants to get it, stands in the way. You know? And it's nothing but a complete belief system. It's not a fact. This meanness is not actually a fact. What I love about non-duality is not spiritual. <laughs> It's so not spiritual. It just deals with fact and truth and for you to look for yourself. Don't believe anything I say, like I said at the beginning. Anything I say ain't it. It's not. So don't hang on to a concept or don't hang on to an idea, anything that I say. Don't grab it. Yeah. I, I used the pointer earlier about um, amnesia, memory's gone. What would stand in the way then? <laughs> Where would you be other than here, present? Okay, so let's look at the me. What is the me? Yep. How does the me function? What does it rely on to function? It relies on thoughts to function. It relies on thoughts to be. For the me to be relies on thoughts. Okay? Thoughts where in, uh, work in the, in, in the pairs of polaric opposites. That's the only way thoughts function. Hot, cold, somewhere in between. Here, there, somewhere in between. Me, you, somewhere in between. This, that, up, down, left, right. That's the only way thinking can function. It's the only way it works. So it's, for it to function, it splits. It's split. And in that splitness, it creates the idea of a me and a you, or a this and a that, or a me and a God, or me and enlightenment, or me and whatever. To me, is nothing but thoughts. And if they all disappeared, if all thoughts, your own thoughts I'm talking about, if they all completely disappeared, where would you me be? Could you say it still is here? Wouldn't be able to say anything, because there'd be no thought. You'd just be. <coughs> All the great teachers, all the sages, Bob, all of them, they, they all talk about arriving at a beingness, <laughs> arriving here. They all say that. Why the hell are they saying that? Are they bullshitting? How hard is it to be? How, is, how, how difficult is it to be here? Here. Try not being here. That's much harder. Try not being here. Can you ever not being can you ever not be here? For yourself I'm referring to. Yep. Can you ever not be here? You're always here. So we've got a mind that works in the pairs of polaric opposites. It's either in the past or it's in the future. That's where it resides. Doesn't reside in the present moment. Doesn't. Absolutely doesn't. In the present moment, thinking stops. It can't operate, it can't function in the present moment. Because there's no split in the present moment. So we say, oh, I wasn't present, I was in my head, I was in the past. You're always present. You're always present. 
just that we identify with what goes on on in our head and call that me. Here's the irony about that. We don't even choose what happens in our head. It just happens. I don't know about you, but if I had any choice over what went on in my head, any choice over what went on in my head, 99% of what used to go on in my head, I would switch off. Okay, I'm going to take a break for a couple of days. I'm just going to choose to think nothing. After all, I'm the creator of my thoughts. So I'm just going to switch it off and just be and chill and relax and watch the sun come up and the breeze blow by and feel the wind blowing over my body and smell the scent of flowers in the air and I'm just going to take a break. Or I might choose to have nothing but blissful thoughts. That's it. I'm in control. I'm the chooser. I'm the thinker. So from this point forward, for the rest of my life, till the day this body drops and dies, I'm just going to think nothing but blissful thoughts. Can't do it. Just can't do it. So all this dialogue that goes on in our head, which, by the way, creates our me, <laughs> All this dialogue that goes on in, on in our head, you're completely 100% powerless over it. It just happens. Yeah, we get affected by it, you know. Some people have inner critics that, that, that go on in their heads. You're worthless, you'll never amount to anything. What's the use of trying? What's wrong with you? Why can't you be around people social? Whatever it, is, whatever it is, it'll be this inner critic that goes on, which again is just a random bunch of thoughts that just float through our head. And they don't stay there. They float through. Not one single thought ever permanently stays there. It just comes up from God only knows where. Where do thoughts come from? Where do they arise from? We don't even consider even thinking about that or looking at that. They come up, they'll float through for a moment, then they disappear. Disappear into where? To someone else. <laughs> you can be sitting in your room by yourself. A whole lot of random stuff will come up and then it'll disappear. Where does it come from and where does it go to? Just stuff we don't even consider looking at. So we bring the past <laughs> into the present, which is the, the, the utmost in insanity. We bring the past into the present and call that me, the past. Can anybody bring, actually really bring any part of the past into the present? Can you bring yesterday into today? I'm talking about the day, not the thoughts of the day, the actual day. Can you bring that into today? Can't. All we've got is ideas, concepts. Our past, our histories, nothing but concepts. And then those same concepts then project into the future. Oh, what happens if this happens? Or I'm going to go and do this. I'm going to create that. Or the future's going to can't wait for this particular time in the future when I'm going to get this or I'm going to become. <laughs> it's laughable. Like, really? Really, it's laughable. You've got to be able to see this. You've got to be able to see this. So, why is it? I'm going to use one of Bob's pointers here, and I love this one. Why is it we can't rem remember back any younger than about the age of two? Why can't we do that? Whatever your earliest memory is, doesn't matter how old you get, you can still remember that. 
it doesn't matter how old you get, you can still remember your earliest memory. Why can't we, re we remember any earlier than two? Why can't I remember being born? Why can't I remember suckling on mum's tit? What, what's missing in that first two year period? Yeah, thank you. Words. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God and the Word was, was with God, I think it goes. In the Bible, hello. In the beginning was the Word. In your beginning was the Word. Your idea of me, of self, is based on Word, which is taught. It's a language. And word is only a sound. And we're taught that a particular sound means something. <laughs> and then the problem is, we then take the word to be the actual thing. It's only ever a description. So the description is never the actual. It's only ever a description. Even if you tell me about your history, you give me a description, not the event. None of the events, any traumas that we may be suffering presently from something that happened 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago, what we're reliving over and over and over and over in the present moment in relation to that trauma is a description of it, not the actual event. <laughs> a description. So all our me is, is a description. Is that all we are? Is that all you are? A description? Like it's common sense. It's really common sense if you look at it. I just had nobody point this stuff out to me before. Thank you, Bob. I had no one point it out to me. As soon as he started pointing it out to me, it was like, oh my God, what have I been? What have I been doing? You know, it, it just. <laughs> It's laughable. It really is laughable. And you know when someone starts to see it because they start to laugh. <laughs> you can't not laugh. Like really. It's absurd. The absurdity of it. <laughs> yeah? So. Generally, what people will do if this resonates for them. And some people it doesn't. And that's fine. Do you know what I mean? But some people it does. And generally, what um, people are encouraged to do initially, some people say, what's the practice? What do I need to practice to get closer to this or to, you know, see this? Well, it's not, it's not really a practice as such. Okay. Um, but, but, like if I said, I don't know, look at that little picture up there on the wall, and everybody glanced and looked up at it, is that a practice? Would you consider that a practice? It's not a practice, is it? It's not. Okay, you just look at, there it is. Okay. So what we are encouraged to do is go looking for our self this supposed me. Go looking for it. Watch it. Look for it. There's no practicing in looking. Just looking. What is it? Where is it? Can you find any center in this body where the me resides? If you look for yourself, where is it located? Generally, what we're aware of most as people is what rattles on between our ears. That's what we notice most. That's where most of our attention is. On 
me. Ew, that's not very spiritual. But it's the truth. And it needs to be seen. It needs to be seen. Thoughts come and go. They just come and go. And your whole identity, that whole notion of a me, is a thought. Only. Just a thought. We assume me is here. We assume it. We don't even look. But we assume that there's a me here. Everything that we do from the standpoint of an isolated, separate me, everything that we do or look at or become aware of or whatever the case may be, is objective. We always look out. Even looking for an answer or looking for a spiritual path or a teacher or a guide or a preacher or the right church or the right psychologist or the right therapist or whatever, always we're always looking out. We never look in. We never look in. We don't even question whether the me is real or not. Just assume, you know, I, I feel like I'm here. Yep, there's a me here. And even when you're looking, even when you're observing, thoughts come and go. They're objective as well. To be aware of something, even if it's thoughts, you've got to be separate from it. Do you understand that? You've got to be separate from it. Whatever you're being aware of, you've got to be separate from it to be aware of it. And if, if everyone in the room can be aware of thoughts, how the fuck can you be them? Your whole identity is based on that. All of it. All of it. It's whatever thoughts say. Just pause, pause, and do a 180. Just turn around and look, as opposed to looking out all the time. Just pause, turn, and look. Tell me what you find. Consider this for a moment. If you're aware of thoughts, that awareness in your own direct experience now, that awareness that is aware of thought, is it split? Is it, is it split? Just look. Is there any division in it? Does it judge? Does it criticize? The common mistake we make is first there's I, which is me. Then there's presence and then there's awareness. <laughs> first there's I. <laughs> so first there's me, then there's presence that I experience, and, and, then there's an, and, and then there's awareness, or if you want to call that presence, aliveness. Yeah, an aliveness. It's the other way around. It's actually the other way around, if you look for yourself. I can't remember who, you'd remember Kat, who coined the phrase, I think, therefore I am. Who's that? Eckhart. Eckhart, yep. Yeah. It's the opposite. That's wrong. That's actually so wrong. I don't know how many people have been fucked up because of their belief in that. It's not, I think, therefore I am. It's, I am, therefore I think. Wasn't it Shakespeare? 
Shakespeare that said, I think, therefore I am? Isn't it Shakespeare? There's a, uh, uh, well, not yet. No, no, to right. be or not to be was Shakespeare. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. And even that, to be or not to be, that is the question. To be or not to be, that's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> that's the answer. We, was, we get it all around the wrong way. Yeah. So that beingness or that aliveness or that here-ness or that awareness is first. That's what you experienced when you were a baby before words got overlaid on the top of it and an identity then gets created on top of that presence awareness. How can we say me comes first? It's ridiculous. And because of that idea, me comes first, it then goes looking for itself. <laughs> it's, it goes looking for itself. That that it's looking for it is. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. And, and it's so clear if you actually pause and stop and look for yourself. Just look for yourself. These pointers that I've given today... That should be enough. Really, if you genuinely have a look, it should be enough. In the beginning was the word. Around two years of age. That's when your self-identity, that's when your meanness gets created. And you don't even have any choice over that. I didn't choose my name. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I didn't choose how my parents treated me at two. I didn't choose what they indoctrinated into me at two or three or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine or ten. I didn't choose any of that. There's a system and I go to school and all that other stuff gets pumped into you as well. Education and like, you know, and then we become that. And we're not that. It's the original conspiracy, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> It is a bit. It is. <laughs> so there's a presence. There's a presence and there's an awareness. And no one sitting in the room right now can say, I am not. You'd have to be there to say it. You can't say, I am not. So even this dialogue that's, that seems to be happening right now isn't coming from a me to another me. I'm not talking to a me at all. I love Bob's saying, you know, I'm speaking to that I am that I am. Awareness, if you like, speaking to awareness, not the me. The me is a f fiction. It's not real. It's not actually a thing as such. <laughs> yeah? You seeing this? Yeah. You can see... Uh, <laughs> it can't help but put a smile on your face. It can't. It can't help but put a smile on your face. It's just, it's ridiculous. So that that we're looking for, <laughs> you know, we are. we are. And it's only a me that feels it's not complete. It's only a me, thoughts, ideas, that feels it's not complete. It's that that goes looking for this. <laughs> and it can never have it. It can never have it. It can't even understand it. It's like us, like, like the me trying to understand that there's no beginning and no end to the universe. Like, what? It's got to be, you know, some beginning and end point somewhere. And again, that's dualistic thinking, and that's the only way it can operate. It can't know wholeness.
It can't know oneness. It can't. It just can't. Here's what it does. And we do this when we're kids. Yeah? Who created everything, Dad? God did, son. Who created God? It's the very next question. You know? And if you try and intellectualize or come to an understanding of what this uh, um, presence is, those, those sorts of questions will come up too. In whatever shape or form. So, trying to get this or understand this or grasp it from the mind, you'll do that forever. It's not possible. It's the mind that's in the way. It's the mind that's in the way. It's what I meant earlier by there's nothing to gain, but there's plenty to lose, seemingly. It's twice I've said seemingly. Because there's nothing to actually lose. It's, all, it's, it's fiction, fantasy. It's nothing. It's not even... There's nothing substantial to it at all. Thoughts I'm talking about. A thought can't see. A thought can't hear. You don't need a thought to see and hear. The seeing and the hearing just happens. The problem is, our me steps in and climbs ownership of it and says, I see. Bullshit. <laughs> Crap. Get out of the way. Seeing still happens. And I could go to the body too and we could talk about that, you know. Yeah, I am the body and so on and so forth. I don't think I'll touch on that today, but it's the same thing applies. If it's objective, if you can be aware of it, it can't be you. Are you aware of the body? Yep. Okay, that's good enough. We've just covered the body. We have. Can't be you. If you can be aware of it, can't be you. I don't know how long I've spoken for, Rich. No, but that was a bloody good point. If you can be aware of your thoughts, you can't be your thoughts. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, and you can, that's your own understanding then. You, you, that's your truth then. You see that, and it become, then becomes your truth. Not an idea. It's a, you see it as a truth, as a fact. I'll finish there. I'll, uh, if, if anyone's got any questions, I'm, I'm happy to, I'll have a shot. <laughs> at trying, at trying to answer them. Some I may not be able to, but I'll have a shot at uh, trying to answer them if anyone's got any questions. I'd love to ask you a question. Yes. So, until we get the word, we are no thought. Yeah. Uh, we have no identity mm. and yet somehow we live in a world where this seems to be as truthful as breath itself that inevitably a two year old will start capturing thought yeah. uh, and word yeah. and an identity is created um, my inquiry I suppose is why are we programmed that way hmm. without it somehow having a practical purpose hmm. for us to exist? Great question. The idea of I somehow protects us and yeah. preserves us. Yeah. And then we think it does. Let go of that. Hmm. And then what? Yep. <laughs> into the wilderness. Good question. Here's the thing Did you say before? that your whole identity is projected in thought for yourself. Did you see that? Didn't see that? Okay, so you need, need to look a bit closer. Um, 
Look, all I would say, what I would rather say to that question, look for yourself. That's what I would rather say. As in, do you mean, do I intellectually understand this? No. What have you seen? What have you seen? What do you know? Not what, I don't, I'm not at all interested in what you think. I'm really not. No offence. I'm not interested in what you think. I want to know what you've seen, what you've come to understand as truth or fact. Otherwise, we'll just sit here and we'll have an intellectual conversation and it'll all just be concepts. We might agree, we might disagree. Do you know what I mean? It's a waste of time. Presently, right here, right now, currently, here, without you going into there, what do you see? What do you know? Great. Just understand that that's the tool that we use, the intellect. Okay? In terms of um, asking questions and seeking and, uh, you know, and so on and so forth, at the, in the beginning, that's all we got. So it does need to be used. Okay? It's just that the question that you asked is not an easy question to answer. I could answer it. Okay? So... Basically what you're saying, well, what's the purpose of it all? What's the purpose of it all? Yeah. Why does that conditioning happen and, happen and why does a personalised self-identity get created and, you know, why is that seemingly the way the world is? Why is it like that? Is that a fair, yeah? Yeah. Summary? Without it having to add to that, uh, also to say that there is some sort of necessity that we do attach ourselves to because it somehow, I don't know, gives us an idea of what is a threat or a, a foe versus, you know, to I'm, survive. I understand. But right there, yeah. before I even answer that other question, yeah. who or what is attaching itself to the word? Who? Who? Or what? Hmm. Is that you? Uh, yes. Is it split? Is it split? Yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, does, does, your, does, does your beingness function in the realm of duality? Uh, yes. Does. Tell me about that. How does it do that, for example? Um, there are moments where my thought governs me and there are other moments where I'm able to observe that my thoughts are simply thoughts. What's and that? Yeah. That, to me, lives in the same realm. Yeah, you haven't answered my question. Maybe I don't understand the question. Well... That beingness, which I hazard to guess you're taking for granted at the moment. I hazard to guess that, okay? That you're just, you're just taking it for granted, okay? If we start the question, remember before when I was saying thoughts just appear from God only knows where. They're there for however long they're going to be there. And then they disappear into God only knows where, okay? Those thoughts that, that come up yeah, and then disappear, who or what's the creator of that? You? Are you creating them? Are you doing that? Are you the thinker? Are you the creator of thought? I'm the blueprint of my history. Are you the creator no. of that 
those thoughts. You're not. Okay. So those thoughts are just happening. Yeah? Who are they happening to? Is that you? That blank canvas? They're happening to something, aren't they? Yeah. You're aware of them, yes? Yeah. Okay. What's aware of them? What's aware of the blueprint? What's aware of the ideas of why is this happening and it's there because protection of and so, so, so on and so forth? All that that just came out of you spontaneously just arose. You want to test that? Just sit there for the next five minutes and think nothing. Good luck. <laughs> yeah? Can you see that? Yeah? It just spontaneously comes up. The problem is we think there's a me there doing it. Or there's a me there that it's happening to. Or it's a me that's asking these questions. Or it's a me that's even creating the thoughts. Me is contained in the content. Me is in the thoughts. It's not separate from the thoughts. We just think there's a separate me here. <laughs> Either creating or being affected by or doing the thinking or having insights or... <laughs> the me is in the content of those thoughts. That needs to be seen. And only you can see that. I can't tell you. I mean, I can tell you that. But for it to become a reality for you, you need to look for yourself and see for yourself. Yeah? Good question. Good questions. Good questions. Your idea of what a thought is and its cyber-linguistic appropriation, like thought is not necessarily its language formulation. It can be images. It can be, you know, it can be images. And the other thing that, that disturbs me a little is the confusion between the Cartesian dualistic viewpoint and the idea that consciousness itself is subdivided. Like you start with a cell, it's subdivided again and again, but it's still each cell remains linked to the original prokaryotic cell. Well, that's a bit like every time a cell divides, the consciousness divides, but it's still a whole thing. Um, but that's a little bit different from the, the dualistic idea. I think the dualistic notion of the self and other and inside, outside, and um, me and this hostile world is actually a, an infection of the original pure awareness. And that, that's the infection that we have to address. I don't know if I'd so much call it an infection. If, if, if that didn't occur, if it didn't occur, absolutely did not occur in anybody, it just didn't occur. So let's, let's say there was no duality at all. Just absolutely no duality whatsoever. Could that singularity know itself? Could that singular, singularity experience itself? Yes, I believe it is a, a type of sovereign integrated self which is ordained by the divine, which is like what the, the ego we should have. Whereas the ego most people have is some sort of concoction, it's a fiction, it's, it's uh, I, I term it um, almost a parasite. And it's intercepting true thought by for reformulating it, recasting it, and rebroadcasting it. And this, to me, is the problem, not so much this idea of separateness. Here's the problem the intellect. That's the problem. Any, look, anything that we can talk about, anything that we can describe, anything that we can hypothesize between the two of us right now is purely born from intellect. The only thing that you can know for an absolute fact, or I can know for an absolute fact, is I am. Well, that's exactly what Descartes said. 
That's what he meant by cogito ergo sum. He meant all I know is that I, that I think that's it. That's, what, that's actually what that quote means. But when you, you're talking about in the intellect, you're talking, most people really talking about this verbal formulation, but if you look at nature, nature's using codes all the time, it's using language all the time. Mm. It's putting together, you know, guamine, trinosine, into an alphabet of <laughs> life which creates... Totally which agree, creates totally values. agree, totally agree. All I'm saying is there's no me there doing it. Absolutely. So even, even, the, even the words or even the thoughts... Whatever it is, yeah. Um, how many consciousnesses is there in the universe? How many consciousnesses? What, what is, what, how many consciousnesses are there? <laughs> no idea. But here, here's what I would say. Here's what I would say. There is one absolute awareness. There you go. That's right. So there's really only one consciousness. Yes. Yes. That, uh, that is true non-duality in my view. Correct. It means there's no separation between you and the source. Correct. Yeah. You are source. Yes. Or you're a subdivision of source. No, you are source. You are that. You are source. Well, it's a paradox there. You're separate and you're not separate. It's some sort of divine, but you'll never be able to. Fa we'll never be able to fathom it. I don't think. Not intellectually, no. But you, but you are it. <laughs> now no, try. Now try talking about it, I and see, that. and see how we go. Like really, try talking about it, and see how we go. Yeah, you're instantiating a separation. Correct. And, and, uh, Correct. That's going to lead to nonsense. Correct. That's because you're using language. Language Correct. is always short. Because language is a blunt instrument. Correct. It's, it's a mobile army of metaphors yep. trying to conquer something. It you know, That's right. It doesn't need to be conquered. That's right. And that I call the infection. Yeah. That I call love. <laughs> Language is a virus. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Memetics which are building, if you understand. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good uh, analogy mm. to be used. Yeah, the virus analogy is, is uh, very good because you've got the natural machinery of the cell which is replicating and producing stuff and then the virus comes and hijacks the reproductive machinery of the cell mm -hmm. to endlessly reproduce itself in meaninglessly. And that's what a language does, yeah. Mm. Take this and suddenly, uh, oh, I can apprehend it in a language and it's really just nothing. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And that just needs to be seen. Like, see that. Stay, that, stay out of there. Seriously, stay out of there. <coughs> That's where the split is. I've got a question. Yeah. Um, okay, talking about staying out of there, where does your feelings come into it? When you feel something, does the feeling place come before the thought? What are we talking about? What kind of feeling are you referring to? Name it. Whether something feels Name good it. or if it feels bad, I guess. So you're talking about emotional feelings? Yeah, uh, yeah I guess a like a response to something. If something's happening in my life, mm. if I think about how I feel. Yeah, right, okay. Got it. Got it. You saw it. Yeah. Yeah, the thought comes first. So just, yeah. The thought comes first. Yeah. It does. It, but it happens so fast, we're not aware of it. We're not aware of it, that the thought comes first. Almost simultaneously, the thought and the feeling come up. Okay. Almost simultaneously. So don't pay attention to either of them. No. <laughs> no. They're not you. Yeah. Same as in a dream, when you're asleep dreaming. <coughs> All sorts of stuff gets experienced in the dream, doesn't it? Is any of it real? Fear gets experienced in a dream, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah? All sorts of stuff. Loss, death, near death, all that gets experienced in a dream. Is any of it real? Does any of it actually affect you? Makes a wake up. Yeah, hello. <laughs> Did you hear what you just said? Yeah. Did you hear what you just said? Yeah? 
It's a really good analogy, the dream analogy, because <coughs> what we're doing in this so-called waking dream, and it is, is the analogy of the dream. So you're laying down on your bed fast asleep, and your dream character is in the dream, and there's mountains and all sorts of things, cars that get created in the dream, and, and that dream character in the dream absolutely takes all this to be real, including itself. Okay? Now on this spiritual search, this quest that we're all on, whatever path you're going down, okay? on this spiritual search, what the dream character is wanting to experience <laughs> is what it's like to be awake. Can it? What happens when you wake from the dream? Poof. Where does the character go? Poof. It's the same. That's why the, that analogy gets used. It's exactly the same. Not a, not a little bit, exactly the same. What we wake up from is the dream. But for that to occur, we need to see there's a dream going on. <laughs> you need to see that for yourself. So what is it that wakes up? What is it that wakes up? It's clearly not you. You're just a fictional character. Let me put it the other way around. Who or what is it that's trying to wake up? The fictional character. The me. Is trying to wake up. Can it? Can it? Can it know what it's like to be awake? Can it actually know what it's like to be awake? <laughs> it can't. It's just, it's just as stupid as expecting the dream character in the dream to know what it's like, to, for it to be able to experience being awake when the body wakes up in the morning. <laughs> See, these are all pointers, just pointers. Yeah? We should all take ourselves down to the police station and have ourselves arrested because we are... <laughs> I love Richard. <laughs> ...claiming... Who doesn't? <laughs> it, it, it's like I... What, what is creating the Richard? Or one of the things that creates the Richard is that Richard thinks he's doing things. Yeah. Sometimes I can see that it's absolutely bullshit. But sometimes, no, I got this meeting together, rubbish. But it's there. <laughs> hmm. So uh, yeah. I think that's the meaning of original sin. Mm. Mm. Well, that's, the original sin is about the split. Mm. Original sin is purely the split. Purely. Nothing else. All the other sort of metaphors have been piled on top of it. You know? Wow. That's the original sin. The split. Well, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you. Yes, you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> You're trying to think of that Mike Crowley story, Richard. The story Mike Crowley told about the guys. On the acid trip, and he goes to the policeman and he says, someone's died. <laughs> and he says, oh, yeah, okay, who is it? Well, I, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. You can start to observe that, it, you know, what Richard just mentioned about the believing he's the doer. You can, you can literally start to observe for yourself, you're being done. There isn't a doer. You're doing shit. You're not doing anything. You think you are. And you can, actually, you can literally start to observe that for yourself. Even the, even the notion I'm the creator of what I think. 
Really? Well, where does that creator abide? Are you aware of that creator that's sitting back going, okay, Terry's just asked this question, so now I'm going to formulate, I'm going to put this word here, and oh no, no, I'm going to change that word, I'm going to put that word back there, and then I'm going to add a few more words. No, that doesn't seem right. I'll create something else. And you create all this stuff, and then what you do with it is then you throw it up into your awareness, and you can see what it is that you create it, and then you verbalize it. Give me a break. Look for yourself. Like, really, look for yourself. It's complete nonsense. Thoughts spontaneously appear and disappear. And your whole identity is based in that thought or in those thoughts. All of it. And it just spontaneously arises and disappears. All of it. Speech that comes out of your mouth. Just like, I haven't got enough time to sit here as a separate creator right now going, okay, well, come on, Terry. Spotlight's on you. You're on. Now, say this. And I go, okay. And then I say that. It's too fast. Way too fast. There's no... I can't... I'm not that smart. My me's not that good. It's not that quick. It can't do that. So everything just happens. You are doing Sp that. You do That's the thing. I know. And, and, you, and you hit on it right there. We think we're doing it. And all the thinking is crap. It's not true. It's like a magic trick. It's kind of fun too, though. <laughs> yeah, if you're providing you're not suffering, it's all right. It's okay. It's not real good when you're suffering. No. Especially if the suffering is only based on internal suffering and there's nothing external to you to be suffering for. Not really. It's just all like I'm fucked up. I'll never amount to anything. What's wrong with me? Negative critic type stuff that can go on on a person's head, that can be a nightmare because they believe it. They believe it to be true. Yeah. You know? I've, I, I have um, mucked around with my own thoughts over the last 20 years Yeah. and um, believed, right up maybe to this moment, that I um, changed the way... I think yeah. on purpose yeah, yeah. and practice every single day. Yep. And and then I started to see the outer transformation. My life looks different yeah. than it did sure. twenty years ago. So, yeah. And so I believe right up to this point that I've. I'm doing that. Purpose. I'm doing that. Yeah. Am I good? So I'm doing. Thoughts are coming from. They're just coming really fast from nowhere. How does I can't see how that fits. All of that that you just described, this, even this notion of, I've changed the way I think. Yep, I've done a number on my me. Mm. Yep, even that arose spontaneously. All of that still arose spontaneously. So could my thoughts have any, can, um, can I change my body? Me? can do nothing. So Zip. people heal themselves Nada. and things like that? They don't. There's no self to be healed. There's no me to be healed. So where does the healing come from? Just spontaneously happens, like everything else. So luck of the draw? There's no me there to be, to qualify as aren't I lucky. It's not. Life happens. Existence happens. That one, in answer to, what's your name? Tushan. Tushan, okay. So I can kind of tap into a little bit of your question before, which I was unwilling to answer at the time. Life just happens, okay? Everything happens spontaneously. Everything just happens spontaneously. So that one source, that one source in its singularity, in its absolute, and again, you're going to have to imagine this because you're going to be imagining it from a me, okay? And the me isn't really going to be able to get this, but to some degree it can, okay? In that, in that singularity's absolute oneness, no split, okay? Absolutely no split, whole. It can't know itself. 
absolutely cannot know itself. Why? Because there's no split. Yeah, no, I get that. Too. Good. Yeah. So there needs to be a split there for it to be aware of itself. Do you understand? Yeah, I get that bit too. Okay. So for it, that singularity, to be able to experience itself. <laughs> Thanks, honey. For that, um, for that singularity to be able to experience itself, what do you think it does? It's the source. Some people refer to it as God. I don't like using that word very often because people have got their own ideas and notions about what a God is. Okay? But for that singularity to experience itself... It has a split. Yeah. And that's duality. Yeah. 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 So, the singularity is it, as in it, but so too is everything contained in duality. It's also it. Mm -hmm. you, you get that? Mm -hmm. Yeah? It just experiences itself through a myriad of different beings and things and trees and, and language and Including language, yeah, the very thing I'm debunking. And that's why I didn't want to answer it before, because it sounds like I'm doing a backflip. Yeah, I'm on the tip of the iceberg here. You see, you're yeah. seeing it though, yeah. Yeah. So this, there's this functioning that goes on in you, particular pattern of energy, particular pattern of thoughts, and so on and so forth. There's only one of you that patterns and shapes and speaks and thinks that way, you are completely unique. Completely unique. If we want to discuss this in duality. And there's a truth in there as well. Okay? For you to understand that, we've got to discuss that in duality. You're unique. Okay? And so as the person sitting next to you, there, 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 here, we're all unique. And the irony is, most of us don't think we're good enough. I need to become better. I need to become better than unique. How much fucking better can you come, become than unique? There's not one other single solitary human being walking around on the planet that is this. Not one. Not one. So that singularity, patterns, shapes and forms, there, and also pattern shapes and forms here. That, including space. That that we'd never give any attention to. Why? We're so caught up in the objects in it. Or we look at, or we notice the objects in space. <coughs> and we do that with thoughts as well. We just focus on the thoughts that are going on in our head. We never stop and pause and consider for a moment the space. We don't. <laughs> we don't. But even when I was talking about feelings before as well, I was also meaning as well the, like when you can sort of feel, hard to put it into words, like an energy. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you can, like when you face on your hand, you can, your hand gets all prickly. Yep. That kind of feeling. Yep. Yeah. So if you're, if you're not, if you're not talking about emotional stuff, okay, if you're not talking about that, a question could be posed, well, what about pain in the body? Is that real? You bet it is. It is. And any pain in the body is just a call to attention. What's going on? It's literally just a call to attention. Do something. So energy will still be experienced here in this body. I'm still going to experience heat, cold, little buzzy feelings in my body, laughed like what I feel when I laugh, like there's an amazing energy that happens when we really laugh, like really laughing, not, not these, not a pretend laugh, which most people, Belly laugh. yeah, a real laugh, there's an energy that gets experienced in there, you know, can that be denied? No. Can the heat from the sun be denied? No, that's an energy. Can the light from the moon at night, when it's a full moon, the light from that, can that be denied? No, it is. It's also an energy. It's, everything is an energy. 
just kind of it was going with before, coded if you like. But it's all an energy manifesting itself in a trillion, 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 trillion different ways. If you want to include the universe, which we should, because it's all one. Yeah. God must have one be busy. <laughs> That's what makes it so magnificent. Oh my God. Oh my God. We have some Taoists here and we were way. Way were way? We were way or way were way? Way okay. Terence Gray? Yes. Yep. Said that um, 100% of everything you quote do and everything, 100% of everything you quote think is about you. And you don't exist. I wonder why you're not happy. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So what we're trying to do is constantly fill ourselves. Fill the void. Fill it. Fill it. Because I don't feel whole. <laughs> I don't feel whole. I feel separate. I feel isolated. I feel like this one lone little individual walking around on this planet. And I've got some friends and some of them I can trust, sort of. And some I'm not sure of and like we think we're separate try separating yourself from the space that's in this room Dad, can I try so mm. what Terry is saying is we're, we're not uh, what he's saying is 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 not that you know the couch that you're sitting on is not really there and mm. that thoughts don't really exist and that you know mm. If I put my hand through it, I should be able to disappear and things like that. What we're questioning is the I that is at the center of everything. We agree that nature has an innate intelligence and that I am speaking, supposedly, and, and we can all attest that words are coming out of my mouth and that you are hearing them. And so what we're inviting you to question is the I at the center of it. What is it that is experiencing all of this? And you would say, well, that's me. I am the one that is experiencing all of this. I am that which is aware of my experience. I am... You are the center point of everything in your life. After all, it is your life, <clears throat> supposedly. And that is what we're questioning. We're not saying that, you know, the universe doesn't... Like, we're just talking about I. What? So, one of the things that I did throughout a lot of my journey is I would say, okay, when I say I, what am I literally referring to? What am I referring to when I say I? And I would always find a thought, a sensation, an emotion, or some kind of feeling in my body. If you actually look, you'll find that it's not there. And I is the cause, you are the cause of all your problems. I am the cause of my problems. Because if I wasn't here, there wouldn't be any problems. So, when you say I, what are you actually ref literally referring to? It's like Terry says, we're not asking you to believe anything. It's not, we're not asking you to take anything on faith. L look, when I say I, what am I saying? What, are, what is it that I'm referring to when I say I? Because I'm not referring to that, or that I'm referring to something that is here. Mm. I am experiencing this. What is that that is experiencing this? What is it literally? And what you'll find, and it's a spoiler, is that there's nothing there. You'll just find thoughts feelings, sense that we're not denying that those things are there, mm. but when you say, I'm not good enough, and I will, and this horrible feeling in your body of, of suffering and constant, this kind of chronic frustration that life is kind of never quite enough, and I, oh, oh, well, one, once I achieve this, or once I do this, or whatever, that is all based around the idea that I am here. And so those thoughts, this has an incredible, incredible practical value. This is not like a philosophical endeavor. Like, because all of your suffering belongs to you. And if you are not there, then all, everything, ha it'll all go with it. Hmm. This is not a philosophical endeavor. This is the most profound, incredible thing that you will ever discover in your life. Hmm. But it requires you actually doing it hmm. actually look don't don't believe it it is rubbish what terry is saying is not actually 
It's not literally true, but you can look and discover the empirical truth. Hmm. Actually, look, what am I referring to when I say I? And you'll find that you can't, and just the fact that you don't have a clear sense of it should be enough. You go, fuck, like, maybe there's a glitch in the matrix and I just saw it. Like, <laughs> like if I don't have a clear sense and I, like, I know I'm in pain, that's for sure. Or I know I feel like life isn't enough. Like, shouldn't I invent, like, what is it here that is in pain? And to discover the truth of that, your whole, all your suffering disappears. And you will be so peaceful. Because the center point that all the suffering is based around is not there. Wow. Actually, look, what am I referring to when I say me? I am upset. I feel like life is not enough. I spent a long time with Bob and a long time with Kat looking, looking. And I was, it was something that I always prided myself on throughout a lot of my search was that I was fucking serious. And I, and I, and I was determined. And I, 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 I didn't just come out for a Thursday night at Bob's to have a chat. I was, I was, I meant it, you know, because I was in a lot of pain. I was really hurting from a lot of things and my kind of young life, if you like to say, like I was in a lot of pain and, a, and, a, and it has incredible practical value. Like your, the problem in your life is you. If you weren't there, there can't be any problems. <laughs> and what we're saying is you're not actually there. And, you're li and, and you go, fuck, I live my life, my whole life until this point, like, like it's like it's Santa Claus. Like, like, I'm the center point in which all, my, all this pain is created. And it's not actually there. That's what we're saying. Like, it's not, like I said, it's not a philosophical endeavor. So, I, when, go I really want to take this out of being a philosophical using to a practical application. Yeah. Like, I, I, I get what you're yeah. attempting to describe intellectually, yeah. but what, what I'm trying to get, if yeah. you don't mind me asking no, you a question. Of course. Um, so, I am yeah. an actor, yeah. and I go out there and I play these fictional roles, and I feel emotions on stage, and Absolutely. I'm able to experience this. And then I come back out of that hologram that I create. Absolutely. And then that's that was never real. Correct. That's I, so I ultimately you that's the analogy that I'm sort of getting mm. that you were talking about. Correct. Right? Have you seen exactly what's happened to Jim Carrey lately? Yes. Yeah. Same I mean, thing. It is I the exact exactly. same yes. thing. What happened? Yeah. Well, it's, he spent a long time, and you'll be able to you'll what be happened? able to testify to this yeah. fully. I've actually got some acting experience myself. Is that he spent a long? He spent one year in character, playing this uh, role of uh, Andy Kaufman, who was a uh, was a public figure, and spent one year and did not break character for a year. And then he came out of it and said, "Oh, thank fuck, I'll be a go, able to go back to being Jim Carrey," and couldn't find Jim Carrey. <laughs> it's an idea. He you are an idea. He couldn't reconnect with the character Jim of Carrey. Jim Carrey. He couldn't reconnect with it, and then he saw. You just saw so, the functioning of all characters. Correct. So can I ask you a question? When you say, be very honest, it requires radical honesty. Very honest. When you say I, because after all, you just asked that question. When you say I, what are you referring to? Don't use the word me. Literally look. What, what is me? What is I? It fundamentally is... No. Lich, like in your direct experience, yeah. look now, do it actually, forget about, because after all, the sky being blue, we don't have to philosophize about it to see that. Yeah. When you look inside, what do you find? A blank slate. Exactly. Really That's not a mistake. Right. <laughs> and do you see the practical, like if you, don't, if you went for a gig yeah. 
and you got really close and we're down to the last few and they said, sorry, man, we went with someone who was a bigger name than you. Yeah. And I'm really sorry about that. And you go, fuck. Like, the problem is that you're disappointed. Mm. Who is disappointed? I am. The blank slate cannot be disappointed. So what is actually happening is you are mistaking yourself for a cluster of thoughts, feelings, and sensations. And you take that to be I. And that is based on memory. I make a living out of it. Absolutely. And that's not a bad thing. That's how it functions. And people aren't aware of it. And it's how the universe experiences itself. It has to do that. Because otherwise, as Terry said, you couldn't find, it, there wouldn't be anything. And what we're saying is, it's like a magic trick that the universe plays on itself to experience itself. And we're, what we're saying is you can see through it, if you'd like. So, that blank canvas, right? What is that? Is it, is it depressed? Can, it get, can that blank canvas get upset if you don't get a roll? No, 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 no. What's happening then is that you're still mistaking yourself for a no, sensation. No, no. I, I say yes, but no, uh, on a very different level. I, I use rejection from my work over the last Got it, days. got it, got yeah. it. But even, even the, okay, can that blank canvas use that rejection? Can it use it? Can uh, it use that rejection and say, no, I'm going to fucking take these notes and I'm going to get better? Yeah, I mean, the blank canvas can't do... Anything. Anything. Full stop. Yeah. That's right. That's, did you say that again? The blank yeah. canvas cannot do, and yet, here you are. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> and you've ended up wonderfully. There is nobody else in the whole world like you, and you're not there. But <laughs> 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 oh, actually, look. That blank, spend time with the blank canvas. And you'll go, eventually, and what you'll find is that things will, I love uh, one of my favorite uh, spiritual teachers, his name is Rupert Spira, and he talks about it a lot, and he says that when you say I, I is that which never comes and goes, and it's always there, and it's aware of everything that passes by. Do you understand? When thoughts come and go, you don't come and go with them. When feelings come and go, you don't come and go with them. You are like the thing in which they appear on. Now that thing in which they appear on, the rejection and well, I'm going to get better, right? Or whatever. Or maybe it did disappoint you. It doesn't matter. The content is not important. But that thing in which they appear on, can that thing be depressed? And what you'll find is, fuck that is where true happiness lies and that is where love lies and I am that. Literally. The problem is you're not aware of that. You still think that you're... What's your name? Deshaun. Deshaun. You still think... And that's okay. It's not a bad thing because it's, it's how it happens. But you still think that you're Deshaun who is an actor, who has this history, who comes from such and such a family and I, you know... I come from, you know, I went to this drama school and I did this and this and that, right? And that blank canvas didn't do that. Did it. And yet, it happened. You are being, as Terry said, you are being lived. You can't do anything. And that's not a bad thing. That's a relief. Mm. <laughs> What I would say to you, if you're serious about doing this investigation, spend time, and some people call this meditation, spend time with that blank canvas. And you go, fuck, that's what I am. I was, and I was always that. And is it called meditation? You could call it meditation. You can call it you contemplation. You, you could call it self. You can do it right now. So you can do it walking down the street. You can do it driving your car. You can do it all the time. One of the things I did, because I... Matter of fact, I've got it now. Correct. <laughs> and, you, and to be honest, you are always doing it. You are just... It's like, it's not a mistake, but it will feel like a mistake if you're suffering. 
Do you understand? But don't believe it. Don't think I'm cool because I said it well or whatever or Terry is very clever because he worked it out or Bob's very wise. They are. But actually do it. You don't have to believe it then. The invitation is to look Look. for yourself honestly. Like, I can't stress the word honestly enough. Yeah, enough. You must be honest. It's not like, this is what we're talking about. This is the thing, because I have been, I was doing this for about five years, this path. And I, at the beginning, I always thought it was kind of like a coping mechanism. Or it was like a way of seeing the world where like, oh, that's kind of clever. And I suppose that does alleviate a little bit of my pain that I was experiencing. It. It's not. This is, this is not spiritual. This is very, it's very literal. I mean, it literally, you are not there. You just through the universe experiencing itself, it feels, it really, really appears like you're there. And it has to do that. And what we're saying is, you can see through it. If you want to. Do you understand? Yeah. I will. <laughs> yeah. That's why we say there's nothing to get. Because to imply that, that implies that I'm not it. If I go looking for it, where's this blank? Where's, where am I? You're, you'll never find it. That's not a mistake. Anyway. Well said. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, I've got that. I've got a blue eye there, a blue eye there. Brown eye right yeah. there. <laughs> what about the third eye that we, we can see but we can't see? It's actually been blinded already. So what's your interpretation of the third eye? What is it? What we really can't see that's it's there in another illusion. Well, say that again. Say that again. Oh, it's okay. okay. So just say that again. I didn't get it. it. But the third eye is what you, what you can't really see. But it's, but sometimes you can open up another, another side of seeing something. Just to, uh, all I would say. Yeah. No one's doing that. Yeah. Huh? Oh. No one's doing that. So there's a scene. Yeah. Which has got nothing to do with the mean. Yeah. If you want to call that a third eye, I'd yeah. encourage you not to. Yeah. I would really encourage you not to. Okay. It's. <sighs> yeah. yeah. We can get stuck in all sorts of different meanings as to what the third eye is and what it can do and. Yeah. And I want I need to develop my third eye and I'll give me a break. Like really. And that, that's not you giving me a break. Yeah, just the I whole notion it of it. Pardon? I do believe it exists. Yeah, well what we're talking about here is I let's come to know what you know. Uh, let's drop the beliefs uh, completely and let's just see if we can come to, to know. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise it's just all based on a a belief. Not a fact. A belief is not a fact. At all. It's not a fact. Mm. So we just deal with what is it I can actually come to know? Not believe. Do you know you exist? Or the belief, belief. Do, you, do you know you exist or you believe you exist? I know I exist. There's a difference. Mm. Right there. Believe is a lie you tell yourself. It's not necessarily a so lie. It's just it, it's, 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 it's not necessarily a, a lie. It's just something that we don't know for a fact. Right. Mm. That's all. And we hope that if we believe it long enough, that a fact will get produced. Yeah. Somewhere down the track. It's like a lot of other things that different concepts have been put on. That scriptural statement: If your eye be single, then your body shall be full of life. How many eyes are you looking out of? Can you say that again, sorry? If your eye be single, yeah. then your body shall be full of light. Energy, the life will be flowing through it. Mm. How many eyes are you looking at? What's your experience of how many eyes you're looking at? Because yeah, you may know intellectually that you have two eyes, but what are you experiencing? How do you feel when you look? It's just What's one What's the first window. thing you see? Tip of your nose. Yeah. Mm. Why are you saying from two eyes or is it a single thing? Oh. How do you know that? If you didn't have the e image of your face, what's the experience? I'm not quite sure. 
<laughs> well, if you look, if, if, if you look, if you're seeing what's happening, happening out of two eyes, there'd be two visions. Then you'd be looking for a third one, eh? <laughs> your eye goes into a point, doesn't it? A point of your nose. Let's drop the belief and come back to yeah. your direct, absolute experience right now. Like, right now. You could take that a step further, okay? Yeah. Right now, if you're looking at me, I'm looking at you and you're looking at me, okay? Now, I'm going to ask you a really simple question I want you to answer truthfully, okay? How many faces do you see? One. Good. Yeah. Where's the face that you see? Where? Yeah. Well, just uh, directly across to you. Here. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. So, is there a face there? I assume that there is because I'm. <laughs> <laughs> think we, yeah, there. Saw, we yeah. think there is. We assume there is. This bit like Bob was pointing out in terms of the scene. Mm. Yeah, I've got two eyes, but is there. This one scene. And if you investigate, if you actually truly investigate here, currently, from here, right now, right this very second, in this very point in time, yeah. if you investigate, is there a head there? Yeah. Really? A head, like your head? Yours I'm talking about, oh. not mine. If you investigate for yourself, is there a head there? Without moving, no. just looking no. here, okay? Without moving, just looking here, yeah. is there a head there? Yes. There. Is there a head there? Not that I can see. No. Is there a mouth there? Not that I can see, but... Yeah. Are there eyes there? Oh, I can't see that. No, you can't. Well, I'm seeing everything in the room. You, can you see your eyes? I can't see my eyes. Right. Yet they're seeing. Yeah. Can't see them. Yet they're seeing. They're speaking through that mouth that's not there. They're speaking through that mouth that's not there. Yeah. It's, really, if you truly investigate it, if you really truly investigate it, there's just a big hole here. Void. And yet, there's... You're aware from it, seeing from it. So, so do you think that we could be, in, you know, just and that this could all be an illusion? That's what I've been That's saying. No, well, I'm, I'm saying this, yeah, but I'm, I'm saying this for a few weeks, a few weeks ago. Like, it is. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. That's not like what do you call about Maya? Like we can create Maya. whatever we want. Maya. You, you can't create like, an illusion of what we we think we want. No. Nope. Yeah. Right? No. Nope. It's called can't create shit. Uh, Bob talks about it a lot where he says there's five fundamental principles that go into existence. Sat, shit, ananda, nama, rupa. Mm. Sat, shit, ananda means I exist, yeah. I know that I exist, yeah. and I love to exist. And nama, rupa is name, your name, mm. and the form. And they say that the last two are maya. They're not actually there. Mm. The name and the form. The name and the form. It's pretending, it's... You'll describe it as a phenomenal manifestation. The dictionary definition of phenomena is that which appears to be. And everything's appearing in it. The things that these are not actual. But at that space like a wings, that screen in which they're appearing on. Got a movie on the screen. Cowboys and Indians, when the movie stops. Are any dead bodies on the screen? Is any coming on? No. The screen was never contaminated or corrupted by anything it appears in. Neither is that life essence that you are. Neither is the life essence. essence that you are. You're not the miserable seeing they tell you you are. You are. You're that view as me. That blank mm. canvas mm. never gets corrupted. Mm. Or presence of awareness, the I am. There's a really good book uh, that Douglas Harding wrote years ago. And it was called On Having No Head. See if you can pick it up. <coughs> See if you can get a hold of it. You'll understand what I'm talking about here when I say that. There is no head here. In my actual, direct, honest, truthful experience here and now. 
I could look in the mirror. You, you could put a mirror in front of me and go, see, 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 look, you've got a head. That mm. reflection in the mirror is not me. Mm. It's not me. Also, the analogy that you used in the beginning, that if you lose the memory, you don't have the picture of your face. Yeah. So how do you know who yeah. you are? How do yeah. you look like? You wouldn't even know what you look like if you lost your memory completely. And if you did look in the mirror, you'd go, who the fuck's that? Who is that? If you lost your memory completely. But you would still be. You'd still be alive. There'd, there'd still be an, a presence there, an awareness there, an aliveness there. Just all the stories gone. All of it gone. And we take the story to be who and what I am. So Just, who am I? What am I here for? What are we here for? There's no reason at all. <laughs> Just who are you referring to when you say that? Me? Who, who are we all? Who are you referring to when you say that? The collective. Yeah. Who are you referring to or what are you referring the to? illusionary characters I've created. Yes. <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> right. Who gives a shit? They're illusionary. <laughs> you know? So you're an illusion. You know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Can I ask Good. those of you who have recognised does the suffering go entirely, or does it top back in and uh, no. come and go? Gone. Totally gone. 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 Zero. We're talking, and, and, and what is being referred to is the person, the personalised suffering that occurs. What drops. Could, what could the suffering cling to? So there's still physical ailments. Sure. I'll still feel pain. You can feel pain. You can feel pain. You could, you could, feel pain. You could be. Mm. Angry. Mm. Anger can arise. Yeah, anger could arise, anger but can arise. there's no it doesn't it happens to no one. So there's no resistor who goes, fuck. It just occurs. So if and anger, if you don't label it anger, it's just a vibrating energy. That's right. And if that comes up, that's absolutely what was necessary to spontaneously come up in that moment for whatever reason. But the moment it comes up, then it's gone, subsides. No. no. Not, there's nothing there. Not at all. Increases. Sure. Yes. But, but there's yeah. no one to go, fuck, this sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It just happens. Incredible, mm. incredible practical value. Mm. You see? It's not a, it, we're not being philosophical. And once you start to see it, you go, you'll realise what this sounds very dramatic but like in uh, uh, Christian and Catholic speak you realize what hell is and what the devil is I am the devil I turn my back on my true nature and I rule over this thing called hell and I need to be protected and everything that I do in my life and is control. is is done for that and it's horrible isn't it <laughs> and, and what we're saying is you can get out and it doesn't mean you can't go out and enjoy a nice meal and hang out with your friends you're more available for your friends because I'm not worried about me <laughs> you can be benevolent and altruistic and have these not even have but exhibit these qualities that these saints and sages and Bob and Terry have because there's, I don't have to worry about my agenda and getting my way because I'm not there. <laughs> Anytime you say I, you're lying. Mm. It's not true. It's not actually true. Incredible practical value. It's exciting to, you go, fuck, like you've found the way out. But it involves giving up you. Now the good news is you're not there, so you don't have to do that. <laughs> give up nothing. Yeah, you don't have to give up nothing. That was something that happened to me when the recognition happened. As I went, fuck, like, I, I, I haven't gone anywhere. I feel more here than ever. Mm. Yeah. I don't kind of become this aloof kind of. I'm here. I feel stuff, and I am passionate about life because mm. I am it. Mm. Do you find everything's a bit for your own experience? Just looking at trees or oh, yes. Yes. Because you're looking at you. Yes. 
Yes, uh, you are a not doubt. separate from me. Yes. Yeah. All the trees. Fuck, I'm looking at myself. It's like a mirror. <laughs> Catch you on the navigate. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. It's yeah. Like... Yes. Yes. You have found the answer to life. This is the most important thing you could ever do in your life. And even if it happened the day of your deathbed, you could die happy. I promise. I'm planning on dying happy. Yeah, and you can. And so the not whole, the, whole the whole self improvement industry is utter nonsense. Right. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but also this is part also of that. it. But also part of it. Yeah. It's a trick. It's a magic yeah. trick. It gets knocked on the head too. But I'm trying to die happy. You were never born in the first place. So how are you going to die? It's fine. Oh, this is radical. There's nothing more radical than this. Correct. Mm. Yeah, really. that's true. Really. Correct. Mm. Yeah. So maybe. Thank you, Dad. Why don't we have a break mm. now?